India's push for aerospace self-reliance, led by DRDO's GTRE, hinges on developing indigenous jet engines like the Kaveri series and AMCA power plants. A vital component, its own flying testbed, remains missing. With Air India auctioning its last Boeing 747, specifically VT Yeso, on May 6, 2025, GTRE faces a key decision. This iconic aircraft, once used as Air India One, could serve as a testbed for future engines, reducing reliance on costly Russian facilities. A missed opportunity in 2024, when four similar jets were sold, adds urgency. If acquired, VT Yeso could support engine trials for up to 25 years, aligning with India's long term defense goals. The Africa India Key Maritime Engagement 2025, launched on April 13 in Dar es Salaam, saw the Indian Navy's INS Chennai and INS Kesri conduct sea phase exercises, including VBSS drills and maneuvers. The Marcos unit collaborated with Tanzanian and Kenyan forces aboard INS Chennai, enhancing joint operational skills. The event, attended by Indian and Tanzanian defense leaders, involves 10 nations and focuses on maritime security, anti-piracy, and regional cooperation. Held over six days, ACIME features both harbor and sea phases, marking a strategic move to strengthen India's naval partnerships and address common maritime challenges in the Indian Ocean region. The second edition of the Tri-Services Future Warfare course will be held from April 21st to May 9th at the Manikshaw Center, focusing on the evolving impact of technology on modern warfare. Organized by the Integrated Defense Staff and coordinated by the Center for Joint Warfare Studies, the course features a broader curriculum than its 2024 predecessor. Senior officers from the Army, Navy, Air Force, DRDO, and defense industry, including startups and PSUs, will participate. The initiative aligns with the Chief of Defense Staff, General Anil Chauhan's vision to foster jointness and prepare strategic leaders for future, tech-driven battlefields. In a landmark move, the Indian Army, in collaboration with telecom providers and the Ladakh administration, has enabled 4G and 5G mobile connectivity across remote high-altitude areas of Ladakh, including Siachen, DBO, Galwin, and Dras. Implemented under the whole-of-government approach, the initiative was supported by the Fire and Fury Corps and leveraged optical fiber infrastructure. Beginning in early 2025, mobile towers were installed even in posts above 18,000 feet. The connectivity boost has improved troop morale, empowered border villages, enhanced healthcare, education, and tourism, and marked a historic milestone with 5G now operational on the Siachen Glacier. In a major milestone for India's AI and tech self-reliance efforts, Union IT Minister Ashwini Vaishno recently launched the country's first fully indigenous AI server, Adipali, developed by VVDN Technologies. Built with eight powerful GPUs, around 80% of the server's development took place in Kochi, Kerala. The project marked years of collaborative work among engineers, AI experts, and developers across India. Positioned as a strategic step toward digital sovereignty, the server reduces reliance on imported infrastructure and boosts India's capabilities in AI hardware, innovation, and national security, while laying the foundation for a broader AI ecosystem. India's civil aviation ambitions advanced with the Saras MK2 aircraft, set for its maiden flight by December 2027, as confirmed by CSR Niel. Redesigned after a fatal 2009 crash, the 19-seater MK2 features improved wings, repositioned engines, and upgraded systems. Revived in 2016, the project aligns with the Atmanurbar Bharat mission. How will manufacture the aircraft, while avionics are sourced from Genesis? Two prototypes will undergo rigorous testing for airworthiness certification. The IF plans to induct 15 units for transport and medical roles, with the aircraft's short runway capability, supporting both military and regional civilian connectivity across India's diverse terrains. Ahead of Prime Minister Modi's visit to Saudi Arabia on April 22-23, the Ministry of External Affairs criticized Pakistan for its repeated misuse of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation Platform, OIC. Foreign Secretary Vikram Misri referred to Pakistan's actions as habitual shenanigans and confirmed India has raised this issue with OIC members, including Saudi Arabia. 
Modi's upcoming visit to Jeddah, his first in his third term, follows Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's 2023 visit to India. The trip underscores the deepening India-Saudi ties and the strategic engagement between the two nations through the Strategic Partnership Council. India's first prototype fast breeder reactor, PFBR, located in Kalpakkam, Tamil Nadu, is expected to achieve criticality by 2025 to 26, marking a key advancement in the country's three-stage nuclear power program. Developed by Bharatiya Napakia Vidyut Nigam, Pavini, the 500-megawatt PFBR will recycle spent fuel from pressurized heavy water reactors using plutonium-based mixed oxide as fuel and liquid sodium as coolant. The reactor reached a significant milestone in March 2023 when Prime Minister Narendra Modi initiated core loading, following regulatory approval for fuel loading and low-power experiments granted in July 2023. PFBRs are vital for enabling the third stage of India's nuclear strategy involving thorium-based reactors. Currently, India's nuclear capacity stands at 8.18 gigawatts, with an additional 7.30 gigawatt under construction and 7.00 gigawatt in pre-project phases. By 2031 to 32, total capacity is expected to reach 22.48 gigawatt. Long-term plans aim for a 100 gigawatt target, combining contributions from indigenous heavy water reactors, light water reactors with foreign collaboration, fast breeder reactors, and advanced technologies including small modular reactors. The PFBR's commissioning is a key step toward reducing nuclear waste and enhancing India's energy self-reliance through clean, sustainable nuclear power. At the 2025 Defense Conclave, defense experts underscored the strategic urgency of developing indigenous fighter jet engines asserting that this is India's only sustainable path forward. The discussion focused on the journey of the Kaveri engine program, led by the DRDO's gas turbine research establishment, GTRE, which, despite achieving several milestones and building critical testing infrastructure, failed to meet the thrust requirements for integration with the Tejas fighter aircraft. Panelists acknowledged that fighter jet engine development remains one of the most complex technological challenges, requiring decades of investment, highly specialized materials, advanced cooling systems, and precision manufacturing, areas mastered by only a few global powers. They attributed the Kaveri program's limitations to fragmented leadership, inconsistent funding, and evolving aircraft demands. Nonetheless, experts recognized the Kaveri program's long-term contributions, including intellectual property, trained personnel, and a foundation for future efforts. They advocated for a consortium-based model uniting academia, research, and industry under stable government leadership. With India's aerospace manufacturing ecosystem now more mature and capable, the panel called for strategic investments and strong talent retention through education, international collaboration, and industry-academia partnerships, framing engine development as a vital component of India's defense self-reliance and operational independence. The Indian Air Force is addressing a critical gap in its long-range strike capabilities, stemming from the absence of dedicated strategic bombers and limited deployment of air-launched cruise missiles, ALCMs. This gap has become increasingly significant given the evolving regional threats from China and Pakistan, both of whom have advanced bombers and missile systems in their arsenals. Currently relying on multirole fighter aircraft like the Su-30 MKI, the IF has enhanced its standoff strike capabilities by integrating the BrahMos missile. However, experts have noted that the limited number of delivery platforms and lack of strategic bombers restrict the full operational potential of these missiles. To counter this limitation, innovative stopgap measures such as launching nearby ALCMs from C-17 Globemaster III aircraft are under consideration. This approach could enable the IF to conduct deep strikes without acquiring new bombers immediately. The IF's long-term goal includes developing or acquiring strategic bombers to match adversary capabilities. Meanwhile, efforts are underway through indigenous missile programs like LR LACM and air-launched ballistic missiles to enhance deterrence. With squadron strength below sanction levels, these developments are seen as crucial to safeguarding India's airspace and ensuring credible deterrence in a potential two-front conflict.
that's all from YKS team for now. Hope you liked today's video. Please subscribe our channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.